Okay, well here comes the clincher. Hopefully it'll all come clear in this uh, problem if you're having some troubles. Alright, this is a pretty ugly problem. So let's just go through it piece by piece. So here we've, we've got this two cos and all this stuff here. So what's the first thing we do? Well we can divide by two and at least get rid of this one here. So we do that and we end up now with just cos instead of two cos um, and of minus a half dividing that one by, uh, two, by, the, by two. In here also I expanded the bracket so that it's just two x and two times pi over three. So here we're going to simplify it. We're going to let theta equal all of this stuff here. So we've got cos theta equals minus a half. That's much easier to deal with. Where does that place us? So far this is just what we've been doing um, once we've simplified it. So the it's a negative cos. So where is cos negative? It's negative in the, th in the second and third quadrants. Uh, what angle is associated with a half? It's pi over 3, 60 degrees. So we're dealing here and here. And in fact, we now look at this angle here. So that's really the angle is 2 pi on 3. And this angle around to here, what's that angle there? That's equal to 4 pi on 3. So they're really the two angles that we're dealing with, and there they are here. Now this is the different bit that I haven't really said to you so far. These are the two starting angles that are calculated in the ways that we've already discussed, uh, hopefully enough times for you to understand that. However, this angle here, notice we got to it by going 2 pi on 3. Now if we continued right around a whole 2 pi, we'd end up back where we started, wouldn't we? It'd be the same angle, wouldn't it? Well, no, because we've gone around you know, two, 2 and a bit times. Well, we've gone right around once, and, and you understand what I'm saying. So, while well, it's in the same place, it's like the hands of a clock going round and round and round. It's travelling through this angle all the time, adding to the number of degrees that it's swept through, even though it keeps repeating the places that it's in. So this angle here, to get to here, if I went around again, I'd be 2 pi further on. So here it is here. This angle here, I just add 2 pi to it. When I add 2 pi to that, 2 pi is the same as, um, as six, uh, uh, 6 over 3. Uh, pi, 6 pi over 3, so 6 pi over 3 plus that, that's where 8 pi over 3 comes. This angle here, same thing. If I go right around to 4 pi on 3, I can do another 2 pi and be back there again. So adding on to 2 pi, and that gives me 10 pi, uh, because that's 6 pi on 3, isn't it? 6 plus 4 is 10 pi on 3. But I could not only go to there and then go around once, I could go around again. In other words, add 4 pi to it and end up with yet more angles. And I could add 6 pi and 8, and 8 pi and 10 pi. Always multiples of 2 because 2 pi, of course, is what's required to travel right around. So that could go on and on and on and on and on. So that's where this sequence comes from, just simply adding 2 pi. So there's a pair here. That's in the first pass around. We pick up those two angles. Then when we go the second time around, we pick up the next two angles by adding 2 pi to it. Then on the next pass, next two pi, we pick up the next two, and so on forever. So I've just really put three pairs in here. And that's given me this range of angles here to play around with. Now I don't know which ones are the right ones yet. All I know is the angles that we're interested in that'll solve this equation here, the ones that are going to solve this for us, for this domain here, are to be found uh, where have I lost it? Are to be found among these angles. That's what I've done. That's, this is where you get a whole lot of angles from when you look in the ants. You think, oh, there's only two, but in fact they've continued going around and around and around within what the, the domain is. So how do we work out what that domain, how do we know which ones of these angles we choose from? Well, here we do it here. We already said, we already substituted this for theta. Remember where we got that from? 2x plus 2 pi on 3? That's just here. We just replaced all that with theta. So here we are here. We're now remembering that we did this and we've got to get rid of theta and have x instead. So we know that uh, the values of x were between 0 and 2 pi because that's what it said in the question. That was what our domain was to be. So how do we get this x to be 2x plus 2 pi on 3? Well, we do this. First of all, the x is multiplied by 2, so we multiply this whole thing by 2. 2 zero is a 0, there's our 2x, 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi. Now we've got this, 
and so we have to add 2 pi add 2 pi on 3 to everything here so 0 plus 2 pi on 3 that's where that one comes from adding 2 pi on 3 to this adding 2 pi on 3 to that now we just sort of work this out that stays the same that stays the same this one here well for lots of 3 then that's 12 pi on 3 12 plus 2 is 14 pi on 3 so the values of theta that we're interested in have to be between this one and this one between 2 pi on 3 is the minimum so let's go up in here oh, okay that is a minimum so that one's included 2 pi on 3 right up to what was the highest one 14 pi on 3 okay so that one that one that one 14 pi on 3 that one that's the last one though no. so that one well, it's a legitimate angle as far as um, the calculation is concerned, as are all the infinite numbers after that. It's outside the domain, so we don't use it. So that's why I said all the angles that are circled. So that's these ones here, which I've just taken from up the top. Now also, that's the legitimate angles of theta, but we want x. So we're now going to have to change these values in here into x. How do we do that? Well, it's just an algebraic equation. If you wanted to make x the subject here, you know you'd have to take 2 pi, um, you have to subtract 2 pi over 3, wouldn't you, to both sides? So you'd end up with theta minus 2 pi on 3. That would be equal to 2x here. And then I'd divide everything by 2x, and that would give me x. Well, that's all I'm going to do to each one of these five angles here. So the first thing I do is take away pi on 3 from each of them. And when I do that, uh, they're the things that I get, so this minus this, there's a 0, 4 pi on 3 minus 2 pi on 3, there's, that's 2 pi on 3, 8 pi on 3 minus 2 pi on 3, 6 pi on 3, and so on. That's at 2x, now I just want x, so now I divide each one of these by 2, so 0 divided by 2, 0, that doesn't change. This one here divided by 2 gives me pi on 3, this one here divided by 2 just gives me pi, because it's 3 pi on 3. This one here gives me 6 pi uh, on 3. Oh, sorry, I'm not talking about 8 divided by 4 is 4 pi on 3. This one here, 12 divided by 2, is 6 pi on 3. Uh, and 6 pi on 3, of course, is just 2 pi. So here it is, 0 is 0, that one, that one, that one, and this one here we changed to 2 pi. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 solutions to that problem up there. X could be to solve this x, that x there, to give minus 1, any of these five angles here will give minus 1. And so that's, uh, that's all, what all your solutions are. That's the way to do all of these. Well, we could have started, started this way in the beginning, it's just that with simple ones we can just use the circle, but this one here we need to do a little bit more.